had made a list before I hit the road. <clears throat> I, had, I had made a list, bro, of people I wanted to get on the show, and and I got your name down. And it's just been a while. Like, it's 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 really hard to like get this whole setup going, dude. Especially like I'm going from state to state, city to city. I'm always packing up and moving, packing up and moving. Um, so thank you, thank you though for making some time, man, and coming on the show. Of course. Uh, yeah, dude. So fucking. Young man, bro, been dancing for 12 years. Yeah, hailing from uh, Chula Vista. Yes, sir. My guy, how did you first? How did you first get into dancing? Um, shoot, man, it's a it's a crazy story because uh, I grew up in church. Uh, I grew up in a, you know a Christian household, and um, we would attend these youth conferences in high school called Future Quest, and they would host like dance battles there and my my sister's ex-boyfriend at the time was a, a jerker he used to jerk and you know hey. would flip you'd be just be this the swaggy artist and whatnot and um it's a small world because uh i met the the group fuego dance crew through one of my middle school friends uh the leader is his cousin which is funny so i ended up meeting them for the first time and i Mind you, I wasn't a, a dancer or anything. I was growing up in sports, you know, and that was like my forte. So dance was all new to me. I was just would see step up and everything. And but I had no type of, you know, any type of skill, no type of flow, no type of nothing. And uh, so that's how I first met the, the group. And then so they would have these dance battles and um, my sister's ex-boyfriend at the time had battled the leader in the group because they were they were that squad at that at that church. You know, they were they were just, you know, that that they were that them. Group they that were the ones stand out. Yeah. Everyone would be like, oh, that's Fuego Dance Crew. Like, you know, no one's mm -hmm. taking them out. You know, like they're just, you know, they were just those stars. And um, my guy, Cameron, shout out to Cameron. He uh, he ended up battling him and he actually ended up beating him in the finals and um you know they got like a really dope exchange it was a super packed out event you know just high schoolers just having a good time and uh i was just fanboying at the time you know i i like to jerk and whatnot too you know would hit it like a dougie here and there but i had no type of no type of culture involved in me or no type of studying any any styles so i was inspired and um and so later, my my guy Cam introduced me to Eric. Eric's the leader, of Fuego Dance Crew, and uh, I did like a little. I busted like a little move for him real quick, and it was trash. But he was like, "Hey, bro, you're dope. Like, you know, come come and uh, perform with us sometime. You know, like uh, we'll connect." So I ended up exchanging contacts with him and and my boy Cameron, and uh, another guy, LaDaniel, Shout out to LaDaniel. He was the first crumper in our in our group. He uh, oh, he got no. to crump with a uh, bash and and knucklehead a little bit, and um, okay. So I was I didn't get into crump till way later though. But uh, that's where I that's where I first started uh, my dance journey. Twenty twelve. Twenty twelve, my guy. Yeah, dude, that's that was interesting because I even seen well I seen the clip. Fuck. Who, what was the song? I, I was just watching it earlier. Uh, I think it was a Daddy Yankee song that you guys did. Yeah. For, for Fuego. And then I was like, I didn't put one and two together, bro, that you were in that crew. And then because I had found your page, you know, I mean, after we met down at the um, at that tournament down at the at the Carson spot, I think it was a rookies tournament that night, too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I met you ended up I ended up finding your profile all this stuff bro and then i was like oh he's on fuego i was like oh that's that's that team i was like oh shit that's that's crazy so i mean i kind of been out of the choreo game for a while now um but it's tight that was another reason i was like damn i was like i want to talk to him bro because when i find other heads who were kind of in like the choreo like open style freestyle scene it's like oh it's like of my same kind it's like bro because that's where i came from like that's how i found crump um through dread through dread me and him were on academy of villains together Oh, sick. And, uh, yeah, we were we were on AOV together right when they first moved down to LA, and um, yeah, he was crumping. And I mean, there was like 
Spartan would show up, Ruin would show up. Bro, they never talked to me. I sucked. Like, I fucking sucked bad. So, like, <laughs> Dread would talk to me, though, because Dread's cool as fuck. Like, I mean, I don't know if you ever met Dread, bro, but he's he's cool as fuck, man. Like, he'll talk to anybody. Um, So, yeah, that's how I kind of got introduced. That's that's dope. So, you choreograph and all that, too, right? Yeah, I started a... Uh... I, I first started choreo um, when I joined Fuego. We did we would do freestyle too, but we were more strict, uh, more like on the choreo side. But we would throw freestyle videos like just for just for the fun of it. It was no serious training till later on in the years. So, but yeah, choreo first. Okay, and you started choreographing what like right away, or did it take you some time to start making some pieces? It definitely took me some time uh, mm -hmm. because I didn't know anything. I didn't know what you know what sources to what to yeah what sources to go to and you know what choreographers I, I would like. So I would kind of just um, I would kind of just learn choreographies from uh, from from the guy Eric, the the leader of Fuego. He would just you know teach us pieces, teach us routines, and we would mm -hmm. just follow it. You know concepts. Uh, um, you know pictures a lot of visuals that, that that's kind of like the the image of fuego is a lot of concepts a lot of just uh you know s storytelling and um you know uh entertaining the crowd and whatnot so i didn't start choreographing like my own pieces till 2017 that's when i first went to mexico and uh across from cancun that's where we met uh our boy in war he's from out there and uh, super, super clean, sick choreographer. He's been in the game for a minute as well. But uh, once I got out there, I was able to display my own piece and then start making more since then. Oh, dope, bro. Yeah, because I was kind of, I was kind of the same way. It took me about five years or so. Um, I really started practicing choreo, yeah, like around 2010. Um, but like, yeah, it was always just like learning pieces from our, our captains, learning pieces from like the lieutenants of the team, um, you know, and, and shout out Channel Islands High, all male, you know, we would do these, you know, these like workshops with like our alumni, you know what I mean? Like the alumni would come by and we would learn from them, sometimes use them for like our comp sets that were like these, you know, concepts or some kind of theme and behind it or some, some dumb shit. Um <laughs> But it was like, it took me a long time to start choreographing, like just to even know, like, I don't even know where to pull from. I don't know, like, is this right? Like, is it supposed to go this way? Or fuck, let alone counting music was was hard enough. Uh, <laughs> who's some of your who's some of your favorite choreographers right now? Do you have like you have like three, three favorites? Um, I do. I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to really study more choreographers now and since I have more mm -hmm. of an understanding of how to approach it. Um but uh I would say from off the bat, um it's not my style at all, but I just love the swag that he has, the musicality, the 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 cleanliness and um everything. But uh I would say Melvin Timpton. He uh, oh, he's up in the Bay Area. Right well, now he's yeah he, yeah he's all over right now. I think he lives in like uh, Europe right now. But uh, yeah, he he's always been like an inspiration to like kind of play with the beat a lot more uh, and just being like very bouncy, you know, and light on your feet. And um, so I would say he would be he would be one of them. Um, I've been a fan of. Uh, I mean, not to be biased, but Farside is dope. Farside's hey, hey, hey. A, a legend. Can't can't deny that he's. It's dope too that he crumbs too. I'm like, what the heck? Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. Um. So I would say him too. Uh. Shoot. There's a lot of people that uh that I look up to in the choreo scene. Um. Man, I'm I'm still like like not as researched as I should be or as I want to be, but um, you know, like there's like Brian Puspos, there's uh, oh yes, um, yeah. yeah, my mind's going blank right now, but I follow a lot of choreographers that like um, I would say have uh, influence on my style and the way I, I approach mm. choreography, um. 
But uh, yeah, I guess kind of just anywhere between like the the musicality being like obvious and um, the grooves, you know, because that's where mm-hmm. I'm trying to take my choreography now. Because I've I've always been like a like a, a hard hitting, you know, kind of stiff, sharp, sharp dude with freestyle mm-hmm. and choreo. But I'm trying to like loosen it up a lot more now too, um, like poriotics. You know, poriotics Ooh, or uh, yeah, poriotics. They're, yeah, they they've been like a, a dope a dope uh, crew that's just uh, excelled in that style. Um, yeah, just kind of in and that it's, realm. It's tight too. It's tight too. Like you come from a a place. Like I watched this old video, bro, of like how so many of the Southern Cal dance teams were pretty much like birthed through like culture shock. You know what I mean? And like culture shock SD like all the teams down there that birthed so many more of what we see today. Like you can like trace the lineage almost, you know what I mean? And like LA gets such a reputation for being like dance hub. I was like, ah, you know, the SD area, bro. Like that's, that, that shit is stiff down there, man. Those guys are tight. Like they've been at it for a while. Um, oh, yeah. But Brian Pustos definitely, bro. I remember like him, Andrew Batterina. Batterina, uh, yeah. Yeah. Dude, Bad Arena, oh my god, they were dropping concept videos when that was a thing on YouTube, you know, like they would drop these concept videos and you would wait and just wait and you might get word from somebody like, yo, Brian Puspos is dropping his new video, like, oh, do, 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 and then you and your buddies all huddle around, like, you know, so I'm kind of, I'm definitely from that era, you know, Tim Tim was like a new guy for me, like he was one of the new, new bucks, um, but he definitely, like, he he has like a whole generation of dancers who try to dance just like him. Like he, yeah, he really sure is. he really changed up the way people approach choreo. Um and Farside's the fucking man, Farside's the man, but I hate his fucking choreo, dude. Oh my god, I have to <laughs> learn so many and just like do so many push-ups over not getting it. So I like I love it, but I hate it at the same time. I have like a I feel like, it. I w- I was like, gonna say too uh Last year, I went to HHI to to compete with my guys. We did the trio division, but um, New Zealand and like uh, that that uh, that side of the the world, they're nasty. Like they're mm-hmm. they just the way they execute. It's kind of like similar style to kind of like you know like that that far side or like that you know mm-hmm. just very just beat killing and very intricate. Um, but man, over there in New Zealand, Australia, um, they, they don't play. No, I mean like Royal family has been running that, that playground for a while, but now I feel like it's just, it's just been so long and so many people have passed through there and picked up the training regimen to pick up the discipline and they start showing it to other people. Now you have more teams starting to pop up from over there. You know, you're starting to see all these different groups and you know, they're they're bangers. They're they're they've I mean, I feel like they've been on my radar since like like 2018, 2017 status. Like they've been they're getting out there. Shout out shout out Oceana people, man. New Zealand, Australia was cracking. Um matter of fact, Jay Street Beast is from over there. Oh and really? So I'll, yeah, I was talking to him about it too because he's he's kind of like he's kind of like us where it's like he was very mixed with crump and choreo, you know, to to start off with. Even though he's more known for his crumping now. Uh, all right, so then you start. So you got your choreo dancing going, and then you start getting loosely introduced to crump. Where was like your introduction to crump? Where, where was like the first big session or like first? first like battle that you had like walk me through that sure man my my the way i got introduced to crump was was crazy because i had no intention of wanting to join a fam or wanting to um you know really just put myself out there i really wanted to just learn the style and and learn the learn the history of it so um i first I first went to my first crump session. I believe it was in Oceanside. I would see Knucklehead and um, you know mm-hmm. them get down over there. Uh, Lamar, Lotus, and um, yeah, just that that community just being solid from you know 2017, 2018. That's when I was first like just really just seeing how how it would all go down and um, 
I wasn't crumping yet though. I didn't start crumping till 2019, April of 2019. Um, uh, and so I started my journey there. Uh, I wouldn't go to the Oceanside sessions as much at that time, not until after I started crumping, but uh, I was in living in Vegas uh, throughout quarantine. So I was in I was in Vegas from 2020 to summer of 2021. And um, shout out to my boy Lucas. Uh, he actually got me to get under Crush because uh, um, he didn't like help me get under him. Like, hey, I'm gonna tell him that you want to be under him. But he would bring me to Crush's garage, like where mm-hmm. so much history has happened there, and I got to see you know legends in there, J Crush, um, the whole Crush family, you know the Loxus and. Uh, I was just so like mind blown on just being there, you know, like not just being an outsider, just being able to witness greatness. And uh, I would just do my thing out there. I was just trying trying to be uh, level up as, as best as I could daily. And I would session there. Um, and I had a, there was a rookie tournament out there in 2020. And I had got to the finals with Oxy and mm. um, uh, yeah, the crush would watch and they would just, you know, talk about me like, Hey, like he, you know, he's got potential. Um, you know, and I battled again another time. I battled one of his homies though. We, it was another little, like little exhibition tournament. And then I did good, you know, I did good enough to where crush pulled me by the side and was like, Hey, how serious, how serious are you about Crump? And I was like, very serious. And he was like, are you sure? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, all right, all right. And um, I was like, damn, like, I couldn't believe it. I was just like, man, like, Crush coming up to me, like, asking me, like, how serious I, like, I have a, a potential opportunity to, to be in the fam. And, um, yeah, later later in that year, uh, they put me on. And uh, hmm. I've been a Crush ever since. I, I can see you take it. I can see you take it serious, and I can see that it makes you happy by like the look, dude. Just the look it brings on your face, bro. Like that's <laughs> that's tight. That's tight. And crushes is somebody. You know what I mean? Um, I remember, I, dude. And I told him this because I've even had him on the podcast, bro. Uh, I did the SLX program program in Vegas, and uh, crush ends up coming by, and it was a really hard lab, really, really. And I like ground moves. I'm into that. And so Chez brings him by. He's like, hey, you know, he likes doing ground moves, showing show some shit. So a really hard lab. Um, we're wrapping up for the night, bro. And I tell Crush, I'm like, hey, man, is there anything, you know, anything I can lab on? He goes, everything. I was like, God damn. I'm like, oh, my God. But that was, like, so token. I, like, I learned in that moment, like, that's so token Crush. He's going to tell you lab on everything, just get better. Like, you know what I mean? He's, he's a, from the way I've seen him interact with like some of his little homies or interact with people who are trying to get into crump it's like he's he's good like he's he's somebody that you should model after and kind of kind of follow that that um uh, follow that example i guess you know that's so so you've been you've been ghost crushed for like what like three years now it's gonna be five in april five years my guys you see rfk let's fucking go shut up flying (laughs) <laughs> how does it Flying feel like by. it's a big name man. it is, is it, yeah is it, it, like a, is it like a do you do you feel like it's more weight do you feel like it kind of like liberates you like how how is it because like again crush is a legend bro no for sure it's definitely uh it definitely has been um some some more weight that i feel like i i have to pull uh and it's funny because uh, whenever I'll mention that to other crumpers that have been in the game longer than me or, you know, that I just uh, know that are more experienced, um, they're always like, don't uh, don't stress it, bro. Just uh, just do your thing. Just have fun with it. And and I'm like, bro, it's kind of hard when, you know, I just feel the expectations just rise a little bit because, you know, you have this you have this title now, this this. Um, you know, it's it, this bar that you have to keep keep pushing up. You know, um, with you know having that having that name being under that that fam, and um, um, so it has been like a little bit more pressure, and I feel like that has kind of 
made me uh, really uh, second guess like my my decision making and my rounds, mm. and um, I really just want to make sure like I'm I'm doing it correctly and that people could read what I'm trying to what I'm trying to say, you know, and um, which is good, you know, because it's mm-hmm. it's made me focus a lot more on my on my basics, you know, on my foundation and uh, uh, fusioning that with my style, with my character. And um, yeah, so it definitely has been a, a, a little bit of a, a little bit of a not not like, I mean, it's a it's a obstacle, you know, but, you know, there's just op- continuous obstacles that you're going to just come come by, you know, and just have to over overcome. And so uh, but I, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't trade it for anything. I'm super blessed to be able to be under him. And uh, I do want to like keep learning, you know, from, I'm always going to keep learning from him and keep uh, learning from other crumpers too. You know, I don't want to limit myself and, uh, you know, feel like I can't learn from other crumpers and other fans because you can, you know, and that's what the mindset that I had before, like, oh, because I'm under him now, I've got to just learn from him. It's like, nah, like mm-hmm. there's other people that can get drop some gems, you know, like uh, give you a different perspective on it, you know, how to approach it. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, man. And it's it's something, too, when you get into a fam and it's like, you know, some people, I guess, kind of get surprised with fams. It's like they just they just get asked randomly. But for somebody who kind of like work towards it, it was on the radar type shit. It's it's yeah. the different. It's a weird feeling. Like once it happens, it's like, oh, yes, like I've been selected. Like, you know what I mean? Like, put me in, coach. I'm, I'm like, I'm here. Like, yeah, hell yeah, put me in the game. And like for me, like making the camp was big. Like that was something, you know, a pressure I put on myself. And then, you know, I was battling all the Cali beasts. And so it was like, I was just going through it, you know. So when it finally happened, I was like, yes, thank God. Like, fuck yeah, I actually did it. Um, what would be another big moment? Like, what would be your next favorite moment that's happened in Crump? Because I could tell that one's important to you. So what would be your next favorite moment in Crump? My next favorite moment in Crump, shoot. Um, well, I am gonna be battling this year in August against a uh, Ghost Norm- Normandy Lane, which I think is cool because it's kind of like the Ghost and the Ghost, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. And it's like a Miho and a Crush. So, um, mm-hmm. I I really want to just uh, I wanna I wanna obviously I'm gonna have stuff before that that I want to achieve and um, that I am gonna be training for as well. But knowing that that's months ahead you know and the the expectations are are very high you know because you have all this time to prep and to train and to um you know gather gather all your ammo together all your you know all your combos kill offs whatever you want to you know however you want to put it but um i feel like this this battle in particular is going to be what is going to dictate like how how serious i take you know crump and uh Mm -hmm. I'm very excited for that one and, and uh, thankful for that opportunity. Shout out to Childish um, for for opening that platform for me because, uh, yeah, I really want to come correct with that battle and just really uh, um, just give everything I got and make sure that everything's on point, make sure that I, I don't I, – I execute my style better than his, you know. I, I know he's – gonna come with everything he's got you know Uh, um so i'm just doing my doing my homework and labbing and trying to just make sure that i i I do my best on a scale of one to ten how nervous are you usually before battles how how what how nervous on a scale of one to ten how nervous are you usually before battles um i would say it's like like mild no matter like if i'm prepared or not uh Mm -hmm. that's just like me like even with uh performances competitions uh i don't really have that when i teach classes i feel like that's where i'm the most like just at home um but uh i i kind of just get like a mild like right before but then once i start once i'm like in the battle i throw my first round or i'm in in the middle of my round then it, it just kind of just goes away and then I'm just having fun. But before like all the, all the, 
all the preparation for it and all like the oh we're about to start yeah i have like a mild a mild like like a- like anxious feeling like dang like i'm i'm here and it's gonna be my time so yeah 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 i get so nervous dude like even just because i know anytime i go home and if i'm at the session i know sherman's gonna ask me to battle i already i already fucking know it so it's like just the drive there i'm trying to pretend like oh, maybe he won't ask me but it's like no i know he is it's like so i start getting a little nervous i'm saying like, well, you know man you know you dance dog you're talented you know so i'm trying to like psych myself up so it's like i get nervous but that nervous makes me excited too like you know cause i'm i just like battling you know battling is is fun sessioning is fun dancing is is fun you know at 31 years old fucking dancing is still fun oh wow me, so. You look young, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude. Don't 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 be fooled. I just shaved, but thank you. Thank you. How old are you, bro? I'm gonna be 26 this year. Oh, young fucking buck. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> thank God, bro. Yes, yes, good. Young people, man. Fucking I feel like a lot of the the voices that are really loud in crump right now are all the really old heads which was weird because when I first got in, there wasn't enough OGs and vets talking. Um, but I'm glad that there's young heads like you, like in me too. Like I'm, I'm still young and crump. Like, you know, like we're, I started in 2016, 2000, like the end of 2016, beginning of 2017. So I'm still young in this shit. I haven't been here that long. So th- I think it's good that there's there's people like you who's got a solid head, you know, just likes crumping, just likes doing the fucking thing and, and having their moments to talk and shine. Shout out Childish 2 for putting on a dope ass battle. That's going to be dope. That's going to be dope, dude. That's going to be really dope. That's tight. Like I seen too in the bio that you sent over, um, you know, you want to do something for changing the communities and helping out your communities. And so if Ghost Crush, if Mr. Paul Lopez was king for a day, you know, and if you could change three, let's say three things immediately, like what would be three things you would want to see added in to your communities? Definitely more battling. Hey. Definitely more battling. Uh, uh, that's part of one of my goals uh, that I want to invest in with the community, just pushing each other to, to – you know, just go to the next level, like within the moment and with whatever genre of music, it could be like R&B or hip hop, crump, but um, just pushing people to to hop out of their comfort zone. And, um, you know, because it, it'll feel it'll feel stagnant. Uh, it's felt stagnant for a while in San Diego. Um, not a lot of people, you know, will want to like, you know, unite and just kind of or be raw you know like a lot like Mm -hmm. i I know this has been talked about in crump too lately like people have been getting like kind of soft with like battling or taking it too personal you know and forgetting Mm -hmm. like the purpose of competition you know like it's it's a competition you know like with sports you know like you're not you're not taking it personal when you're like on a football team and if you guys lose like oh like it's like no like it you guys both came to compete, you know, and there shouldn't mm-hmm. be no, you know, no reason to take anything personal or have bad sportsmanship. So, um, and don't get me wrong. I, I used to be like that, but when I was a little kid, you know, but yeah, you know, since I've been in dance, I don't feel like I've given off that bad sportsmanship or discredited anybody if I did lose or, you know, or if it was a bad call on like the judges in, um, I, mm-hmm. it's just, you know, it, it is what it is and, um, just got to come back better next time. But, uh, yeah, I definitely want a lot more competition in the community. Um, a lot more unity, just everybody just kind of knowing each other, you know, and not just, this is the choreo head. These are the freestyle heads. Like now what yeah. if we could fusion it and, you know, just bring, bring one big, you know, community together. Like, why not? You know, like there's mm-hmm. no reason why it's not possible to do. So I think just that's like just one of my short term goals this year is to really um, just gather as much people as I can together um, to do that. I want to start hosting battles uh, monthly for the community, just, you know, low stakes, nothing like 
crazy, but just to challenge people, you know, during the during session times. And then when at the end of the month, it's tournament time. Let's see where everybody's at. Let's see what everybody's been practicing. And um, yeah, just kind of just challenging everybody, pushing them and um, growing together as a unit. Yeah, I think it's a very, very lost concept that dance is. Yes, it's an, it's an expression. But when we gather like this, it can become competitive. And that's okay, too. Like, you know, so all of us just expressing ourselves in the session, that's cool. But if you want to dance and you want to battle, then it's then it is a competition, my friend. Like, I am trying to beat you because you're trying to beat me. Like, that's how that works. And that's okay. We shouldn't get so frustrated, you know, because if we're playing basketball, you know, and and me and you play a game of one-on-one, I lose, run it back. Let's run this back. No, I can get you this time. Or, you know, and you just have this back and forth until you go home, go back the next day and just do it all over again. And I don't know why we don't think of that more often with these battles. It's like, bro, if you have a problem with it, just run it back. Like, we don't need to do all the talking and I don't do the I don't do the talking on on the on the Crumpers page. I just I try to kind of stay out of it as much as I can. I really do. Same. There's some stuff I just have to because it's like either really funny or it's just like like ah, ain't nobody gonna say it, dude. All right, I'll say it. Like so that's I mean that's one thing. I'd rather do my talking in podcasts or whatever. But dancing, I don't I don't think I've ever of all the shit that I've seen and any of that. I don't think I've really ever harbored like ill will towards anybody like on a personal level like dance like fuck you like i will battle you every single time i see you if i get the chance bastard because like fuck that. <laughs> like, you know like you embarrassed me one time or you know or or people said we tied or whatever because i'm just competitive i'm i'm competitive like that um whatever yeah do not san diego to me like san diego to me was the place um one of my good friends who i first started crumping with moved to san diego so i always felt like a piece of me was there like piece of piece of me piece of my fam i mean i do a podcast with him on tuesdays uh shout out um and he's he's still living down there matter of fact and we we talk all the time and and he's kind of followed me and followed along in my career because he stopped crumping type shit but um yeah man san diego is a special place bro special place uh for sure so I know you ended up leaving Fuego. Are you going to be continuing any kind of other teams? Are you going to start your own thing up now with like the whole like choreo aspect of your dance? I do have uh, I do have a lot of a lot of plans as far as uh, creating my own team. Uh, I I don't want to rush it. You know I want to do it mm-hmm. right and take my time and make sure that uh you know it's just done correctly but uh i do plan to start my own choreo squad um i do um or i am going to start my own crump fam which is going to probably come before the the choreo team not because like i i like crump more than choreo but um i've been working on that um more right now and uh People have just been coming into my life like since I parted ways with Fuego that it just feels right to do it first, you know, and um, mm-hmm. and that's just kind of just where my route's been going. So uh, I do want to have a choreo squad. I do want to have a crump fam and um, also throwing events with the community uh, as far as like traveling and and whatnot i don't i think that's going to be on hold for a while just because um i have to stay here and and make sure that i'm grounded here in san diego i got a lot of stuff uh in my personal life that i have to take care of that's more priority um Mm -hmm. but uh yeah the crump the the crump fam and and the choreo scene uh i could still do that here while i'm working on myself so um i'm excited for this uh this crumb fam that is going to be dropping because it's also going to be like my name, uh, my AKA, you know, cause I've been, I'm still going to be putting in work as ghost crush, but, uh, the name, once it drops, once the fam drops, like I'm going to start using that name, you know, moving forward a lot more. And when, when I enter battles in crump or when I have, uh, battle card events. So. 
Yeah, hell yeah, dude. I know I felt weird the first couple times I actually went by corpse. It was always J Dread or Baby Dread, and I was like, then it was like corpse. I started hearing my own name start being said in the crowd. And then I remember the first time like hearing like, oh, we got corpse versus this. I was like, oh shit, like that's my name. That's, like, that's, that's cool as hell. <laughs> like, that's me, bro. Like, yeah, I am yeah. J Dread, bro. Like, don't ever, don't ever get it twisted. I am this guy, but that's my name. That's me, bro. Understand that this goofy motherfucker. Uh, man, yeah, dude, it's exciting. Um, I started a fam just with some of the guys who wanted to learn from me from Oxnard, and and I didn't even think it would last. I mean, shout out my guys, bro. I didn't think it would last because they were good, and so you know, Dread wanted to pick some of them up. Uh, God, I think they got a, they've gotten approached by all kinds of people, Beast, fucking all kinds, dude. And it's like, yo. All right, and but they don't want to be from them just because I was living there and we've just we've known each other for so long now. But uh, they're yeah. holding down the name, they're holding down the corpse fam in Oxnard. Shout out the corpse boys. Um, yeah, man, dude, I that's think that's one tight. of them. Was one of them at the uh, sorry to cut you off, the rookie, oh, yeah. into, the rookie event that recently uh happened in uh at the beast camp, or it was oh, yeah. Like, yeah, my dude, uh, my dude, Jay Corpse, Skella. Yeah, dude, Skella. he's tight, yeah. bro. I remember seeing him uh, in Oxnard a, a, a couple times when I had went out there to, like, teach a class with with uh, a buddy of mine. And um, I remember seeing him and stuff. And But, yeah, he, yeah, yeah, I remember seeing him at the at the tournament. I was like, bro, he's tight. Yeah, dude, he is the heir apparent of the 805 because he, you know, started his own team. And then now he's got, like, five teams that are all under that moniker and then doing stuff with crump and he does stuff like on his own time, like throwing workshops and shit. So he's, he's doing it. Shout out, shout out Zariel, man. That's a, that's a fucking talented kid. Um, yes, sir. but then there is, dude, there was, there was a point where like we were throwing sessions, man. And, and just seeing like the growth of it, like, like, yeah, hearing you say like, man, we need more battles and this and that. It's like, yeah, dude, like, even in my city, I was saying it like, yo, we got all these freestylers, you know, and people learning crump. Like, why ain't we battling? Like, what's the problem? Like, if feelings, if it's because of feelings, that's that's a you problem. But if it's a schedule, like, all right, let's schedule it. Like, let's get something going. Like, what the fuck? All it does is take is a couple text messages. Like, look at this podcast, bro. We scheduled this podcast in a couple messages. Yeah. <sighs> well, my man, listen, listen, I don't want to hold you up too long. Um, I, I do want to say thank you though. Thank you for coming on the show. I'm um, getting to speak your piece a little bit. Yeah. I hope we can do this one again. Yeah. Um, before we tune out though, is there anything that any like gym or little nugget that you want to drop with the people so that they can play this back and listen to it? Shoot, man. Um, I would just say, don't be afraid to to shine when it's your time to shine. Don't be afraid to step up when you feel it in your gut or in your heart to to step up in a in a positive a positive way, in a positive intention, not in a way where you're um, trying to do it in a in an evil way, you know, or if you're if you envy anybody or if you're, you know, not if you're not working on yourself, then that's different, you know, but if you, if you have been putting in work and you have, and you do love this art, you know, that we all love to continue to tap into every day, um, just, just don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to, to be you. Cause that's at the end of the day, what people that do succeed, that do, that we look up to, to say, you know, is to don't be afraid to be you. Don't be afraid to, step up, step up to the plate when it's time to, you know, time to spread your wings, you know, change is good. Change is scary, but it's good. Mm -hmm. It's needed. You know, the only way for us to keep evolving. So uh, yeah, just taking that leap of faith. My guy, thank you so much, bro. I'm going to send you a message right now, dog, and and we'll chop it up in the DMs. Hey, I appreciate you, Corbis. It means a lot. You reaching out to me about this, man. It was a, it was a pleasure. Thank you, bro. I'll holler at you.
All right, man. Everybody, that was Ghost Crush. Paul Lopez. Listen, 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 listen. The dude, the dude is so fucking talented, right? And as you guys seen, just humble, just wants to dance. Yeah, and it's inspiring to see that there's still young cats up in the community who just, they just want to dance. They just want to crump. They're not, they're not fucking around with any of that. You know what I mean? And it's, it's inspiring. Yeah, it's inspiring. It's, it's motivating. Yeah, and it re like, I don't know. I don't know. Talking to the young heads bang different. Talking to the young head, heads bang real, real, real different. Yeah. Um, Cause I just feel like it's cause I've been doing this for so long, right? You feel like you just watch the same cycle happen over and over and over and over again. You kind of start to lose faith. You know what I mean? You lose faith in what dance really brings. You know what I mean? And I know I still love dancing. You know, I still love, love doing this fucking thing. You know what I mean? Um, and young guys like him, young minds, young movers like him inspire me to keep doing it, to keep moving because there are still a group of heads who got the pure love and joy for this shit. I think, I hope that may, I hope I wasn't rambling. I was, but I love you guys. Yeah. Thank you for everybody tuning in Instagram, Facebook, all that. Yeah. Um, you wild animals, check it out. I got another uh, podcast tomorrow with my man, toy boy, AKA Prince Oxy. Yeah. Um, that one's going to be a treat. So make sure you guys tune in for that one. That one's going to be tomorrow. Um, 7 PM Pacific. Yeah. 10 PM Eastern. Um, come hear him. He's a fucking talent to see. Yeah, he's a talent to behold. Another young cat hoping to prick, pick his brains, and he's really excited, too. I could tell he's really excited to be on the show. Um, Everybody, everybody, who t- listen, I appreciate everybody tuning in. I appreciate everybody tuning in. Felicia, I love you. Felicia, I love you. Shout out the Milkman and the Unlucky Charms podcast. Uh, Crew, we out. I'm trying to sign off this this damn thing and the Wi-Fi is tweaking. So you guys imagine that. Everybody listening on Spotify, you're going through it with me too. It's cool. We are in this. We're in this together.